Hi everyone! In my first ever tutorial, where I went over the basics of Pet Workshop, I touched on the idea that you could do some fun things with Lines Pro as a beginner without needing to really go into the details and the nitty gritty of the coding. I want to go into that a little bit more today. I'm going to load up an orange short hair. Remember, you want to navigate to lines and then go to the adult, the adult cat section or dog if you're editing a dog. And then the, the sections we're going to be looking at today are these sections that say enlargement, extension and the scale section, which is a little bit lower down. Here, the default scales. I already touched on the default scales a little bit in the pet workshop tutorial because this is the one section here that you can actually also edit in pet workshop. So just to go into this again with a little bit more detail, what the default scales do is change the overall size of your pet. That's this first number, the pet scale and then the size of the individual balls. So that that's the ball scale. The Yoshi by default has 102 and 106 here. If I change both of these by the same amount, I will get a proportional increase in the size of both the, the pet and the ball. So it'll just look like a larger Yoshi. So if I just do that, let's go for 162 and 166, save it. Launch the game. Now you're not going to see any difference in the kitten, but if I turn this into an adult, you see that we have a giant washi. Now say that I want to have a big washi like that, but I want to make it really skinny looking with uh, tiny balls instead of big ones. So this one controls my overall pet size and this controls the ball size. So let's say I make this 126 instead of 166. Save it. Get our orange short hair out. Age up. And now we have different proportions. Okay, what about the opposite? I can make this big and this smaller. Save. And now the cat isn't that big. It's just a little bit bigger than a standard Oshi, but it has much bigger ball sizes, so it looks all fluffy and fat like this. So what we've looked at so far is the section that you can already edit in Pet Workshop, but there's also sections of the lines that you can't edit in Pet Workshop and which also won't display in Pet Workshop, and that's what we're going to look at now. The first of those is the head enlargement. Head enlargement, like it says, controls how big the head is. It also controls the relative positioning of the features. So the first number here, the 115, is the one that controls the percent increase in the size of the ball. And you can go higher or lower with that, and it will make the head bigger or smaller. The second number is a little more complicated to explain, and I'm not going to try to do that, actually. I would say instead, experiment with it and see what happens, but it is effectively a number that controls the relationship between the expansion and the size of the head, so as it gets bigger, and the relative positioning of the different features. So you can end up smushing the eyes and the jowls together or moving them further apart by changing that number. In this particular case, our cat already has quite a big head because of the changes we made to the ball sizes. So I'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller instead, but not drastically smaller. So I'm just going to go for 110 and I'm going to leave that second number untouched. And if I save and open, we'll see what our changes look like. So 
Not a huge difference, but a little bit. Maybe we should go a little bit smaller, actually. Like a hundred, let's say. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. I think that's pretty cute. I'm happy with that. The next thing we come to is the face extension. The face extension controls how uh, protruding the muzzle is. So it's currently negative. We can go positive to make it have more of a muzzle. Let's go for 25 and then see what that looks like in the game. So because this this uh, number also moves the cheeks forward, it has ended up with the cheeks kind of covering the eyes. I'm going to reduce that just a little bit because I don't want to have to do a huge amount of editing afterwards. So I'm going to go for, let's say, 15 instead and see what that looks like. You can, of course, independently move the cheeks back. But the goal is to try and minimize how many edits I make to this afterwards, so I'm just going to go with that. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. That's more of a muzzle. You can see it's sticking out. Oh, gosh, it was sleeping sickness. Mm, still sticks out a little bit. The cheek still st sticks out a little bit, so I'm going to make it even smaller. Let's go for 10 instead. I actually quite often use 5 for the face extension in some of my hexes. I don't usually go as high as 10 though, so I'm not really sure how it's going to look. But that's the fun. It's in experimenting and seeing what comes out. Yeah, I think that's quite cute. Okay. okay come on, go away. Next we come to the body extension. So you can make the body longer or shorter. If you go negative in this case, it would go a lot shorter, it would be more compact, but I'm going to go positive. I'm going to go quite far, so I'm going to go like positive 40. Yeah, you can see the Saxon sort of look happening here. And now the muzzle also doesn't seem as out of proportion, I think, because the whole body is long. Okay. Next we come to the leg extension. I always think the leg extension is quite fun to play with, but actually if you do too many changes here, you do end up having to move everything around to keep it looking good. But... It also affects the movement quite a lot, so you need to be a little bit careful. The same goes for the body extension. It can affect the movement quite a lot. I'm going to show you what it looks like if I increase one and then the other just for fun. So let's go for really long front legs. This first number is the front leg. And let's leave the back legs, or let's go negative on the back legs. Let's go minus 30 on the back legs. And save. And you see it moves quite oddly now. It's a bit of a monster. Quite fun though. Yeah. Okay. And of course you can also do the opposite. You can make the back legs really long. Let's make the back legs, let's go for something a little more reasonable, like 50, and then let's make the front leg minus 20. And 
and uh, I don't think I need to describe this cat. You can see for yourself <laughs> what we've done. Now, I personally quite like the idea of making something that's quite short and compact, so I'm just going to go for a more reasonable minus 10 on the front. And let's go minus 30 on the back, because I kind of like it to slope a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. It's hiding. Come on, stop hiding. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Then we come to the feet enlargement. So the feet enlargement works very similar to the head enlargement with the simple increase or decrease in the size here and then this uh, scaling number here. So I'm going to make the feet bigger. Let's go 120 and I'm going to leave this as it is and save. You can see it's got quite big feet now. And then finally we have the ear extension which is pretty self-explanatory a larger number makes the ears longer, it extends the distance from the tip of the ear to the head, and the the smaller the number, then the closer the ear gets to the head. I think possibly the Scottish fold in PETS 5 has folded ears because the ear extension is really low, it's not actually a real folded ear, if that makes sense. I'm going to go bigger on this one. I want it to have bigger ears, so I'm going to go for 135. And there we have an Oshie with some really long ears. Okay. So we've created this weird creature and we've done it entirely by playing around with the scales and extensions that are at the beginning of the lines file. Now you will have noticed that I haven't touched the kitten and that the kitten keeps coming out of the adoption center looking exactly the same as the original. That's because the kitten also has its own scales exactly the same as the adult does. So you can go into the kitten and you can make the same types of adjustments or if you want you can make the same adjustments to the extensions and enlargements etc but keep the default scales the same so it's going to be smaller but proportionate to the adult or you can make a note row by making them the same in both files there's lots you can do by messing around with this. Another option is to make the kitten completely different to the adult and then you have a kitten that transforms into the adult form and you have no idea what it's going to look like. It's entirely up to you and that's kind of the magic of playing around with this stuff that you can make quite big changes with very little effort and it's all just trial and error. Now one thing I wanted to show you was what happens if I open up the file that I've just been editing in Pet Workshop, you'll see that it looks basically exactly the same as it did right at the beginning when all we had edited was the scales, the default scales. And that is because, as I said before, Pet Workshop can display this section, but it can't really do anything with the top, with um, these sections here. So just keep that in mind when you're making edits because obviously your changes from Lines Pro are not going to be displaying in Pet Workshop properly. The final thing I should mention is that there are some limits. 
So you can increase or decrease these sizes quite a lot before it's completely impractical to have that petting game, but they won't breed true. So up to a point, scales will breed true, but if you increase your extensions too much or you um, increase the scales too much or any of those things, then even if your breed file has those in it, it will not breed true. And I think people do encounter this issue from time to time, and it can be really disappointing because you've worked hard to hex something, and you've released it as a downloadable breed file, and you want it to pass on its characteristics, and then it just can't. So just something to keep in mind, there are limitations to this section, but it is a lot of fun to play with, and you can create some really fun, unique individual hexes with it. I guess at this point, I will go and make some changes to what I've just created, make it look how I would like it to look, and I will release it with this video as I usually do. Hopefully that's demystified the scale section and extension section a little bit so that you're not uh, worried about editing things. It's a really fun way to get started with making changes in Lines Pro. Enjoy! And uh, I'll see you hopefully quite soon with another tutorial.